If you're not using an RSI checklist, every time you intubate your patient, you're putting your patient at risk. A a study published back in 2020 in the Journal of Pre-Hospital Emergency Medicine found that just using an RSI checklist like this one increases first pass success rate from 69% by 84% simply by introducing an RSI checklist. Now, one of my favorite things about the RSI checklist that I use, it has the heaven criteria. I'll put it right here. The heaven criteria is something that you use to determine indicators of a difficult airway before you try to go in and introduce your blade in the endotracheal tube. But I also like to not just use those as airway indicators, but then follow it up with mitigation techniques to reduce the difficulty on these patients. And the heaven criteria was developed uh, several years ago by Dave Olvera and a handful of other airway experts over at Air Methods looking at thousands of charts of patients. It was a retrospective study. And the H stands for hypoxemia. So if your patient is already hypoxic, we wanna fix that. You can give passive oxygenation. You can place them on a non-rebreather if they're still breathing for themselves and ask them to take eight full volume deep breaths. If they aren't breathing for themselves, we're gonna use uh, our BVM with PEEP to try to mitigate that hypoxia. The E is extreme of size. If you're a pediatric patient, you probably wanna prop the shoulders. If they're morbidly obese, you wanna make sure that you're propping them and ramping them to get that ear to sternal notch alignment. The A is anatomic challenges. Does this patient have a goiter? Uh, do they have any kind of genetic anomaly that causes them to have a really short neck? Or if it's a pediatric patient, they're likely to have an anterior airway. So recognizing those and expect to see a difficult airway when you've got one of those. The V is for vomit or blood, and we can fix that with Jim Ducanto's salad technique, where we do the suction-assisted laryngeal airway decontamination, where we're going to uh, lead with suction and get all that junk out of there, park the suction catheter in their esophagus, and then go in with your blade and the tube. Next up is exsanguination. Of course, if we intubate them and start ventilating these patients with high flow oxygen, it's not gonna help if they've lost all their blood volume and they don't have any red blood cells to take that oxygen down to the tissue. So we wanna control bleeding and give blood products in those patients. And finally, that last N is for neck mobility. We're not gonna be able to position the patient appropriately if we've got a C collar on. So the recommendation is to open the C collar and have someone hold mine, manual C spine precautions, which is hard to do kind of from the side of the patient because you're busy at the head intubating, uh, but it can be done and it should be done safely in order to reduce the risk of a difficult airway. So there you have it, the heaven difficult airway indicators and how to properly use a checklist when you RSI your patient.